Have you ever wondered if a ported subwoofer and a sealed subwoofer can work together? Do you want to know what a carbon fiber 24 inch subwoofer with 4400 watts RMS is capable of? Well, it just so happens we're going to answer both of those questions today while we review the Harbottle Audio C24 L2 24 inch carbon fiber subwoofer. I'm Barrett, this is Specatech, welcome to the channel. Here at Specatech, we recently revealed the one-of-a-kind Harbottle Audio C24 L2 24-inch subwoofer that is all carbon fiber with 4400 watts RMS and 10,400 watts peak. That video is linked in the top right-hand corner as well as in the description down below. And let me tell you guys, this subwoofer is absolutely insane. I know that I've revealed to you guys the Funk Audio uh, LFE 24 Ultra and that subwoofer is truly out of this world as well, but this Harbottle Audio subwoofer, although in a much smaller package really does pack a huge punch guys i am so impressed and you're going to find out why in this video here at specatech we also don't like wasting any of your time i like you guys am super excited about gear so i want to get right into this video we have a lot to cover we're going to cover the price the specs the build quality the performance and sound quality also i'll give you my final thoughts and what i think of the subwoofer overall i'm also going to share with you if we were able to get this sealed subwoofer to integrate with my ported uh, funk audio subwoofer there will also be demos thrown in there of course and lastly we're going to cover one of the secrets or the design philosophy that Harbottle Audio uses to make this one of the best subwoofers in the world. Let's start with the price. Before we get into the price of the C24 subwoofers I wanted to let you guys know that Harbottle Audio doesn't only focus on the uber luxury pricey end of audio. He also offers a DIY solution in the form of a pre-built Baltic Birch enclosure for an 18 inch and a 21 inch subwoofer. You can either source the amp and the driver yourself or you can purchase it from Harbottle Audio. This really is a great option for those of you looking for a high quality subwoofer at a reduced price. I've dropped the link for Harbottle Audio down in the description below. Feel free to go check it out if you want. Let's get into the price of the C24. Currently the Harbottle Audio C24 is available in two variations, the L1 variation and the L2 variation. I have the L2 here. There will be an L3 version announced in the future, but currently there's only the two versions. The L1 version is currently 4,900 USD or about $6,350 Canadian. And the L2 version, which is the one I have here, is priced at 9,000 USD or about 11,500 Canadian. Pricing for the upgraded L3 version is yet to be announced. For more information on the different models, just go to the Harbottle Audio website, which I've linked down in the description. Now I know that is no small price tag and it could be a tough pill to swallow for some, but this is no ordinary subwoofer made from ordinary materials with ordinary performance. Oh no, 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 you are getting much more here. I did do a review of the Funk Audio LFE 24 Ultra subwoofer a little while back. I'll link that video in the top right hand corner as well as down in the description below. But in that video, I harped on the fact that there was zero compromises made during the design and construction of that subwoofer. And for those of you that watched the overview and unboxing video of the Harbottle Audio subwoofer, you realize that they are affiliated with Funk Audio. Meaning this Harbottle Audio C24 is made with the same no compromise, low distortion and low compression philosophy as the Funk Audio LFE 24, but we'll cover more on that in the performance and sound quality section. For this price tag, you would hope that it comes with some very impressive specs, and Harbottle Audio did not disappoint in this regard. Everything about this subwoofer is specced out, starting with the enclosure. The C24 is a sealed enclosure that measures 35.43 inches high, 28.43 inches wide, and 20.16 inches deep, and it comes in at a hefty 150 pounds. The sides of the unit are tapered, so those measurements will be at the widest points. Each enclosure is custom built and made by hand with strict quality control measures. But this is not your ordinary sealed enclosure. No sir, because Harbottle Audio is not your ordinary manufacturer. This is a real 100% carbon fiber composite enclosure. I know in my previous video I did describe this as a carbon fiber veneer, which isn't exactly wrong, but a carbon fiber composite actually describes it more accurately. That is because the carbon fiber actually becomes part of the Baltic birch enclosure underneath, which adds stiffness and rigidity by a significant margin. This acts like an external brace, applying pressure to the outside of the enclosure. You now have an enclosure that is heavily braced internally as well as externally, and we all know that rigidity is beneficial, especially for such a large, powerful subwoofer like this. This will help prevent resonances with the lower frequencies. Harbottle Audio took this sealed enclosure that looks absolutely fantastic and paired it with a 24-inch high-performance carbon fiber cone driver. For those of you that may have watched my LFE 24 Ultra review video, these specs may sound familiar because these drivers are identical. This driver is made with an all-aluminum cast basket with four layers of carbon fiber making up the cone and a 9 inch neodymium motor structure which is one of the largest ever used in a commercial subwoofer. 
This absolute beast of a driver has a huge excursion of 80 millimeters peak to peak. The driver had to be made with zero compromises and handle some huge power because it is paired with a 4400 watt RMS and 10,400 watt peak amplifier. The amplifier has dual XLR inputs, full DSP control built in with connectivity either through USB, direct to the PC, or a network connection through the Ethernet port. It is controlled with Funk Audio's DSP control software, which can be downloaded from the Funk Audio website. A lot of the DSP functions can also be accessed directly through the front mounted display. The amplifier will automatically switch between 240 volt and 120 volt, and it does offer auto on off functionality. Obviously a 240 volt connection will give you better performance, but it works just fine with a 120 volt 15 amp connection as well. If you guys are interested in more detailed specs, feel free to check out the Harbottle Audio website, which I've linked below. So now that we know what basic components make up the C24, it all means nothing unless it is built with the utmost in quality. When discussing a subwoofer in this price range, a customer can expect a certain level of quality and Harbottle Audio does not disappoint in this regard either. Every aspect of the subwoofer from the enclosure to the driver and amplifier were custom custom designed and made by hand with strict quality control measures. The build of this enclosure is actually very unique and is made with every attention to detail, from the tapered sides to the chamfered edges. The lines are clean cut and offer a classy yet tactical look that just inspires awe. And besides the performance benefits of the carbon fiber composite, it looks absolutely gorgeous. I have personally had plain looking subwoofers like Black Ash, I've had SVS subwoofers with piano gloss finish, and I've had a Funk Audio LFE24 with a naughty walnut veneer with solid wood corner inserts. I do love a good old piano gloss finish and I really love the wood finish of the Funk Audio subwoofer. It is really well done, but there's just something about a carbon fiber subwoofer that is just beautiful, unique, and super badass at the same time. The composite carbon fiber with satin finish is by far my favorite look on any subwoofer or speaker for that matter, hands down. And that continuity of the carbon fiber continues to the carbon fiber cone of the driver and they just complement each other beautifully. That monster 24 inch driver is built to last and built to perform. It also fits snug and flush in the enclosure. As a matter of fact, the amplifier, driver, and front display are all recessed and fit snug with no gaps. Everything here is cut to precision. To sum it all up guys, you would be hard pressed to find a flaw in the build quality and for this price you should expect nothing less. But that isn't all you should expect at this price point, you should expect top tier second to none performance and Harbottle delivers on this as well. Before we get into all that, if you guys do like brand new unique products like this, please consider subscribing to the channel and you might as well tick the bell icon if you do subscribe so that you can be notified about my future videos and please take just one second to click that like button down below. It really takes no time at all for you, but I really do appreciate it. And one more thing real quick before we continue is I just wanted to bring up the movie of the week. What is movie of the week? It is a 4K title that is $20 or less and it is in the description down below. So feel free to check it out down there. All right, now let's get back to the performance. The performance of this subwoofer is one of the best in the world, bar none. Before we get into the numbers, the room measurements and the sound quality, we need to discuss one of the secret design philosophies that Harbottle uses when building all of his products. And that is LDLC, which stands for low distortion, low compression. So let's start off with distortion. We all know that distortion can be audible and is not a good thing. First, we need to know that the audible level of distortion is not a straight line. So Harbottle and Funk developed the F1 threshold curve based on years of testing and measuring output at various distortion and compression percentages. That all sounds cool and all, but what does that mean for the listener? Well, they took this information and they used it to chop away at distortion and compression until it is only perceptible close to the max output of the subwoofer. So basically, you will not see compression and you will have very low distortion levels until you are very close to the maximum output of the sub. In just a moment, I will show you the compression testing that I did with Rue and you're going to see exactly what I mean. But this design technique will affect the listening experience including the perceived output, the imaging in the low registers and will reduce localization or directionality in the higher bass frequencies. If you guys have any questions or comments about this, feel free to drop them down below in the comments section. I'll answer any questions that I can and I'm sure Cody from Harbottle Audio will be checking in on the comments as well so he might answer some of your questions. Before we get into the room measurements of this subwoofer, let's sum up the performance and sound quality. This subwoofer offers some of the cleanest and hardest hitting bass on the planet, and that is no exaggeration. If you guys are looking for a subwoofer that can do it all, look no further. This subwoofer can offer you that low rumbly bass down to 9 or 10 hertz at high SPLs, and it can also hit hard like a jackhammer. This thing is impressive in all aspects. Normally with a subwoofer you can say that it provides you a good rumble or it's nice and hard hitting and tight. This this subwoofer really does do it all and it does it with very low distortion, super clean, articulate, 
tight base. And for those of you out there that think that a large driver subwoofer can't offer you that, I'm sorry to say you are absolutely wrong. I normally don't make statements like that in my videos, but I've seen it several times in the groups where I've posted the subwoofer as well as the LFE24. And I've had people make comments about how a large driver can't be clean, it's sloppy, it's it can't uh, start and stop quickly, it sounds like a fart box. <laughs> it's just comments like that. And that couldn't be farther from the truth, guys. You can get very clean, very tight base from a large driver subwoofer. As a matter of fact, I would argue that it provides cleaner, tighter base than a smaller subwoofer. Why? Because a large driver cone like that does not have to move as far to provide you the SPL that your system is trying to produce. So a 12 inch subwoofer, say, has to move in and out like this to provide you an SPL, whereas this 24 inch driver needs to barely vibrate at all to give you that same SPL. So it can provide you extremely articulate bass. Trust me on that. Sorry guys, my rant is over. I just wanted to clarify that because I had seen that mentioned in several different groups from several different people. So it seems to be a stigma that some people think a large driver subwoofer has and it couldn't be farther from the truth. Like I said, I don't normally say people are wrong. Obviously some things are subjective, but in this case, that statement is wrong. This subwoofer and large driver subwoofers in general can be very musical, very accurate, very clean and very tight. Uh, it just depends on the subwoofer, its design and its quality. So the output of this sealed subwoofer is impressive. How impressive? Well, let's take a look at the compression testing that I took and keep in mind that this is only the Harbottle Audio C24. It is not both of my subwoofers running at the same time. When they are both running, I will make sure to tell you guys that uh, when I show you some of the RU graphs later on. But in this case, it is only the C24. One other thing I want to point out real quick here is that when you are running one subwoofer, uh, you will see a little bit more nulls and peaks in a room because you don't have two subwoofers to smooth that response out. So when I am running only the Harbottle Audio C24, you are going to see some peaks and nulls, but that is not a fault of the subwoofer. It is merely my room interacting with the bass. So just to give some details as to how these measurements were taken, I had the C24 in the front left-hand corner of my room, and then I had the Roo microphone at my main listening position. So these measurements were not taken with the microphone close to the subwoofer. They were taken at main listening position. So this is the compression testing here of the C24. And as you can see guys, is a pretty impressive flat response for one, for just being a single subwoofer. You're gonna have to ignore this 80 Hertz null here. That's just my room interacting. Um, but so one thing I wanted to show you guys is we're at 116 decibels at eight Hertz from a single subwoofer with a single driver. And even though we're hitting those levels at those frequencies, there's still no compression. As you can see, everything is nice and uniform. So essentially what you want to see with compression testing is if you uh, are going up by three decibels, which is what I was doing on my master volume, I would go up by three decibels at a time. So here we're at 113 decibels um, at negative three master volume. And then at reference volume, we're at 116. So we gained our three decibels, which is exactly what we want to see. And I also wanted to show you guys that even down to seven Hertz, I'm at 115 decibels. That is just absolutely incredible. And it is so much fun to see that. And again, it is a very flat response from a single subwoofer. All right, guys, now that you've seen some of the SPL measurements that this subwoofer can hit, as well as the compression testing in the front left-hand corner of the room, let's move on to how the Funk LFE24 ported subwoofer integrated with the Harbottle Audio C24 subwoofer. But before we get to that, I need to tell you guys that the positions were changed. So the Harbottle Audio C24 typically lives about a foot and a half behind my main listening position, and the Funk Audio LFE24 is usually in the front left hand corner of my room and that is where they were for these measurements and of course the microphone was placed in the main listening position. All right guys so here we have some of the compression testing that I did with both subwoofers running so the uh, LFE24 and the Harbottle Audio C24 and this wasn't really to go to max guys I wasn't trying to get the absolute um, highest SPL just kind of wanted to show you the compression testing and how they were working together. So one thing I want to mention here is that Cody from Harbottle Audio did provide me with some custom tunes specifically for my room. So he did help me out with the tuning of the subwoofers to get them to work together. But as you can see, they work together just fine. These lines, although they're not exactly 100% perfect, these are very good lines, guys. It is very flat uh, within a few dB of itself here. So 
here we are at about 11 hertz 116 db and again guys this isn't max output this is just to show you guys how they're working together if i would have added volume you would have just seen the line just as flat as it is here just at a louder volume so i don't need to always do max spl but here we are again 11 hertz at 16 116 decibels and with this tune uh, cody did roll off the high end a little bit um, and i'm going to show you what it is with a different tune in just a second here this one is just a room eq that he provided for me so i just wanted to show you guys Yes, a ported and a sealed subwoofer absolutely can work together, and you can see the proof right here. Um, again, my room does not like 80 hertz, so you're gonna see this little bit of a null here. Although Cody did improve it, you can't completely EQ it out. One thing I do wanna show you here, so let's clear all these lines off. Maybe we'll just leave the one, we'll leave the one loudest one, which was at negative seven master volume, it looks like. And here I took some measurements with the max extension turned on again. So this is the max extension EQ that adds a bit of a house curve, but increases your low end. So <laughs> I just wanted to show you guys this here. So this green line, uh, we are at negative seven volume with the gain on the subwoofer at negative 10, but in the max extension room tune that Cody custom did for both of these subwoofers. Here we are at about 11 hertz, 126 dB, and that is not even max, guys. This is not what the volume cranked. This is not what the gain cranked. 126 decibels at 11 hertz. That is awesome. I don't care what you say, that's fantastic and these subwoofers are working together. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed those room measurements. And again, I wanna reiterate that they were not peak SPL. I was not going for the absolute loudest I could in my room. I didn't wanna wreck anything, including my house. All right, guys, if you do wanna know what the peak numbers are or the CEA 2010 numbers are, here they are. They are provided by Harbottle Audio on their website. So as you can see, I have the L2 version. So for the L2 version at 10 Hertz, you're looking at 99 dB, 12 and a half Hertz, 103 dB. And it just keeps going up from there. There. And by the time you hit uh, 32 hertz, you're at 124 decibels. Uh, so it looks like the peak altogether would be 127.3 decibels at 50 hertz. So guys, obviously it is possible to get a ported subwoofer and a sealed subwoofer to work together. Is it ideal? Not exactly. It is always better and easier to integrate two identical subwoofers than it is to integrate two different subwoofers. But it's not that it can't be done, and it can be done with great results, as you can see from the measurements that I showed you guys. And I absolutely could not have done this without Cody from Harbottle Audio, so a special thank you to him. But one thing I wanted to point out is when you do purchase one of these subwoofers, you do get a remote tune from Cody uh, at Harbottle Audio. So basically, he will remotely connect to your computer, you can take measurements of your system, and then he can tune it according to your room specifically, and that is included in the purchase. So guys, I guess we do have 100% proof here that a ported subwoofer and a sealed subwoofer can work together very nicely as long as you put in a little bit of extra effort to make them do so. Now, I know there's a lot of you guys out there that have probably been patiently waiting for a demo of this subwoofer. So let's get into the demos. Let's show you guys some excursion and what this thing is capable of. Oh man, there's just something about that gargantuan 24 inch driver being able to provide you that much excursion and yet be so precise at the same time. It's just mesmerizing. Although the subwoofer is capable of all that powerful bass I just showed you, at the same time, it is just as capable at disappearing in the room for music. Now, even though it has the looks that you wanna keep looking at it, 
At the same time, it can just completely disappear and provide you that subtle bass that you're looking for for your music. Even though it is such a big driver, it doesn't always have to be loud, guys. It doesn't always have to be obnoxious. As a matter of fact, I had a friend down the other day. His name is John H. He was delivering an amplifier for me to check out. Uh, so when he came down, I figured I might as well give him a demo of the system. And he was surprised as well at how well these subwoofers, in this, in this case, it was both of them, the LFE24 and the Harbottle uh, C24, were able to just disappear from music and be so subtle. They don't always have to shake the room and rattle your brain. They can be subtle and just so clean um, and just provide you that nice low end for music, but at the same time, not be obnoxious. Even though, yeah, it's a 24 inch driver, two 24 inch drivers with a pile of watts behind them. But that doesn't mean that it's always overbearing. It can be clean, it can be subtle, and it can be precise for music that just sounds fantastic. Then you put on a movie and you just crap your pants, guys. This thing will shake everything. And especially when it's paired with the LFE 24 Ultra for movies, it shakes the house, it shakes the rooms upstairs, doors are rattling. Guys, it's just so much fun and so intense. It's weird though that how it can just tame itself right down for music and just blend in perfectly with your front speakers and be so subtle. All right guys, we've covered a lot in this video already, so let's move on to my final thoughts and what I think of this subwoofer. Okay, I want to clear up one thing uh, that I hate to sound like I'm or only have positive things to say about this subwoofer and you guys think maybe I'm ignoring the negative. That's not the case here. When you buy a subwoofer um, with this price range or in this category, I guess we'll say, um, you're expecting a certain level of quality, you're expecting a certain level of performance, you're expecting a certain level of, uh, I guess, uniqueness or, or luxury to it. And in this case, it truly does deliver. Now, obviously, if it didn't deliver, then there would be a problem because at this price point, you expect it to deliver. So I don't want to sound like I'm only saying positive things, but I really have nothing negative to say. And if I did, I guess, have anything negative that I had to say, I guess it would be the price. So yes, the price tag is high, but we have to put things into perspective here. So this is a different category of subwoofer. I guess it's leaning, um, the best way to describe it would be in the luxury market, I suppose. But <clears throat> value is subjective. So to me, this subwoofer has value. Now there is probably those of you out there shaking your head and thinking, well, how could that have value? The price tag is, is a hefty one. Yeah, it is, but what are you getting? Look at what you're getting here. You're getting a top tier performance, uh, amplifier, a top tier performance driver in a custom carbon fiber composite enclosure that you can't get anywhere else. You are getting amazing looks, in my opinion. I mean, when you guys see a supercar that's made from carbon fiber, what do you automatically think? Performance, boom, that looks amazing. For the most part, not everybody likes carbon fiber, of course, I get that. But for the most part, people love carbon fiber when associated with performance and it gives it somewhat of a tactical yet beautiful look at the same time. So you're getting all that. All right guys, so long story short, this thing absolutely delivers on all aspects. And if I did have to pick a negative, I guess it would have to be the price. Uh, of course, if I could get this subwoofer for less money, I would be silly not to, but you can't. If you want this subwoofer in what it all offers, the price is the price. So there's nothing like it out there that you could say, well, instead I'm gonna get this carbon fiber 24 inch subwoofer that has top tier performance for less money. There isn't one. So if you want that, if you value that, this is where you get it. One thing I can promise you guys is that this subwoofer will provide you an absolutely insane home theater experience as well as a fantastic music experience. And that's just the cold hard truth. If you guys are into audio and home theater and cool one of a kind subwoofers like this, please consider subscribing. And if you do subscribe, you might as well tick the bell icon so that you can be notified about my future videos. And if you could take just one second out of your day, guys, see that like button down there, just give it a quick tick for me. It takes no time at all for you guys and I really do appreciate it. As always, make sure you guys enjoy your systems. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.